Hello! Today I was going to do a bit of an extended tutorial on training an Argos train model for Argos Translate and Libre Translate. So I already have a brief tutorial here that just quickly walks through um, how you actually run the script. Um, this is available on YouTube and Odyssey. There's also a written tutorial here that's pretty helpful. And then I have basic information in the README about how to train a model. Um, but I've been kind of disappointed with how few people have successfully trained their own models. So we did get this community Russian model, um, which was very good. Um, but at the moment, almost all of the Argos Translate models are ones that I train, which part of the design of Argos Translate was that you can train a model on a single GPU. So I was hoping for a lot more kind of community contributions and people kind of doing their experiments. Um, and there clearly are some people training them that just aren't contributing them. So a couple of times I've like introduced bugs in the scripts and then someone's found them. So clearly they're running it. Um, but yeah, it's really mostly been me. So today what I was going to try to do was train a new Chinese model and just walk through the entire process of how I do it so that other people can hopefully fill in any gaps they may have. So yeah, we've had some reports of poor Chinese translations. Um, so we can start there. Um, so... Um, and I, I was kind of already aware of this. I, I don't think the Chinese is especially good, but it's one I'd like to do well with because English and Chinese are the top two languages. Um, so let's see. Luxury locks, rest of single hand. Um, so it seems to be talking about some sort of reality television program. Um, so this seems like it's maybe reasonable, I'm not quite sure. Um, let's see something else. That's pretty. So what's this? The forest landscape located in Graham. What does Google say? Yeah. Um, so I think it may be worse in the other direction, which I think is what this person was reporting. Um, Uh, yeah, so they seem to be trying to tr translating to English as well. Um, but also train one. Another complication, so so just to kind of review how Argo Translate works, it's based on the OpenNFT project, and there are three main repos for OpenNFT. Um, so there are two for training a model, and there's the PyTorch version and the TensorFlow version. And I trained the original um, five or ten models using TensorFlow, and then at some point I ported the training scripts to the PyTorch version um, because I just wanted to be using PyTorch in general. And I watched a um, a talk that was given by uh, the C Translate 2 dev who's involved with the project and what he said was that the TensorFlow is a bit more of a production ready system and the PyTorch one is a bit more kind of experimental and research oriented. Um, so something I've noticed is that these models I trained on the TensorFlow version 
were higher quality than the ones I've done for PyTorch. So uh, I trained a, like the German model that Arbus Translate and Libre Translate use. It seems to be reasonably good, and it was trained with the TensorFlow version. And I've trained new ones with PyTorch, but I just can't get the same quality. So I've just left and haven't touched those uh, since they seem to have come out decently well. Um, the other big project is C Translate 2, and this is really the heart of Argos Translate. Um, so, uh, C Translate 2, it has a standard format for uh, storing and running the models, and it's very fast and efficient. So I think this has been very important for Argos Translate's success because um, you can run Argos Translate, Libre Translate, easily on just like a normal CPU. You don't need to mess with the GPU, CUDA, or anything like that. Um, and the current Argos Translate doesn't use... Um, so C Translate 2 um, also supports models converted not trained with OpenMMT. So you can like take these huggy face transformer models and run them to a C translate to. Um, so I haven't actually, or Argos Translate, the current Argos Translate doesn't use this, but on the, um, on the V2 branch, which is the dev branch, um, we use this M2L100 model, which is trained by Facebook. Um, and so this is one model that can translate um, to and from dozens of languages instead of an individual model for each language. Um, so, but today what I'm going to be doing is using Argos Train, which is based on OpenNMTPY, to train a custom Chinese model from scratch. So the first step is to get the data. So um, almost all of the data for Argos Translate comes from Opus, um, which is done by these folks. Um, and it's very nice. So essentially, they have just compiled a bunch of uh, machine translation data sets all in one place, and it's easy to access and download them all. So I'm going to do, let's do English to Chinese. So you can just enter the language codes. And you get them. I think this is part of why the Chinese model, model struggle. Despite Chinese being a huge language, there doesn't seem to be that much easily available data for it. So like if you compare this, um, so we have like 100 million tokens, 60 million, 30 million, and then compare this to um, English to even like a smaller European language. So there's a ton for like English, German, English, French, but even if we were to do like English, um, let's do English, Polish, is that Polish? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, almost a billion, 170 million, 169 million. Uh, so it will make things a little bit faster because I don't have to deal with big files. But um, so I always download the Moses format, which is essentially just a file. It's two files, and you have parallel sentences on each line in those files. So let's download these. You should have done this beforehand. Uh. 
So these are some of the data sets you'll only see. So CC matrix, I forget who did this, um, but it's a very large data set, though often a bit messy. Um, oh, it's Facebook. Um, and Wikimatrix is another big one that has a bunch of languages. This is also Facebook. Um, so I think this is extracted from Wikipedia. And then I essentially just try to use all of the big ones. Um, I avoid some of the data sets have non-commercial restrictions, so I don't include them. And then I often don't include some of the smaller ones because they're just more effort for me than it's worth for like 20K examples or something. Um, so I think this one may be... Excellent is fine. Um, so I was checking if excellent was non-commercial. I think Tanville maybe. Yeah, so non-commercial. So I'm not gonna do that one. Um, this one might be not commercial too. No? Nice. Okay, so I'll let these download for a bit in the background. Um, and then we can look at loading the data into um, Argos train. So there are two main ways to do this. Um, the one that I use is to add it to this data index.json file. Um, and then if the data is available here, um, you can, Argos train can uh, load it in a very automated way. So the point of this is, like, for example, today, I'm going to do the work to uh, organize all of the Chinese data. But then once I upload it to my data server and add it to this file, then I can just access it programmatically and I don't have to do as much manual work going forward. But I don't think... Um, yeah, so I don't have any... Chinese data here currently. Um, so when I trained the Chinese models, I did it more manually. That was before this system existed. Um, and you still can load it manually if you want. So I talk about that here. Um, if you don't want to use the kind of automated system, which can kind of be a pain because you have to upload it to some URL and then edit the file, you can just put it directly the two files uh, in this run directory and uh, do it manually, um, which if you're for a once-off is actually uh, probably more convenient, but then this data index system is good if you just want to be able to keep training models. Um, so let's see if this is... Okay, so he's largely finished. Um, so we can look at what this data looks like. Um, so let's start with this one. So this is what's nice about Opus, is they put all of the data in this common format. So they have a README, which just has some nice information about it, the license, and then these are this XML file, which I never use, and then these are the main files. So this is Moses format, is what Opus calls it. It's the same format Argos Translate uses, and it's just parallel lines of um, aligned translations. 
So the first line in this file will be some sentence in English. The first line in this file will be the same sentence in Chinese. Um, so we can take a look at that. So so, so this is maybe the Bible data set. Um, so this is an alleviation from your Lord and a mercy. And this is presumably the same sentence in Chinese. Um, and then so on. So what I need to do now is to make the uh, standard format to add to this data index.json. So like I said here, data packages are zip directories with a .argos data extension that contain a source and target file with parallel data, that's what I just showed, and corresponding lines and a metadata.json file. So I have a example here. I'm looking at So this is what it looks like on my data server. So I have this data.argosopentech.com server, and then I have these files which have an Argos data extension. So we can get this. Um, and then we can take a look at this. So this is what I'm trying to create out of this Chinese data I just downloaded from Opus. And so if we extract here, it has an Argos data extension, but this is just a zip archive. And inside we have this directory. And like it said here, um, I have the source and target files, a readme and license, which are totally necessary, and then this metadata file. So you can see this metadata here. And then it's the same format as our uh, uh, Moses format data from Opus. So I'm going to start making these. So this conversion is a bit manual, but um, you only have to do it once, and then once you have it, in the Argos data system, then it's all programmatic. So I'm going to start with, let's start with one. Um, so I'm going to make my folder, or um, yeah, I'm just going to do it inside this directory. So translate, or no, data, wiki matrix, um, ch. Um, and I copy these and put them in. And these are named source and target in the Argos data system. And then, um, I'm going to make this metadata file. And then it has this size attribute, which is the number of lines. So I can 
use just Unix commands to see how long that is. This is word count and then the number of lines. So you can see they're this long. And then I have this reference, and Argos train will take this reference and add it to the readme of the Argos model uh, package. So, um, I'd normally pull the reference off of Opus. So this is Wikimatrix. Let's go here. Okay, so this is the metadata file. That's all you need. And then I'll also copy in this license and read me. And that's really it. So this is this is a Argos data package. Source, target, metadata, and then optionally you can add some other files like license or readme. And so I'm going to copy this here. And then you compress this to a zip. Um, Okay, so this is it. And then I just renamed the extension. So this is an Argos data package. Um, so as you can see, that is a bit manual, but I do have some automation around this. If you go to the Argos train repo scripts and opus convert.sh, um, so I'll keep going. I'll just go in order. So let's do two next. Uh, I'll go a bit out of order, then I'll do three and then come back. Oh, that's three not. Okay, maybe I'll do. Uh, Four. All right. Um, so I gotta remember how this works. Oh, this does the unzipping too. Shoot. Okay, so I forgot how the script works. You actually, you enter the code, the URL to actually download it, but I've already downloaded them all. And then it'll automatically unzip it 
and um, do some of the moving the readme license like I was just doing, and then it expects this metadata file here. Um, so I actually think I'm not going to use this for now, um, but this script can be helpful for kind of automating this process. I'll just go manually. Okay. So I think two is now unzipped. Okay, two. So let's do two then. Just move this metadata file example here. in parallel a little bit. So this one I'm doing two. I'm going to pick up on three here.
It's already that one. I should also modify the uh, this to be Chinese since that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, so that looks good. Okay, so this is still going. So we've got two, three, and then let's make a new one. Oh, so. um, let's do the unnumbered one.
looks good. There we go. Um, so we have zero through four in the works. So I think it's just five left. This one. Okay, so I'm going to get these all in one place. Um, okay, so we should have everyone except the zero width. I got to copy this one. One, two. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um. So, yes, yeah, so this is what we need. And then the next step is to upload them to the data server. So,
SCP. Too. Uh, this may take a while. Okay, I'll get the other ones copying though. Um, this to run and then the other step is to add them to this um, this data index dot JSON so So fortunately, the format, um, actually before I go forward, I should recap what I just did. So essentially, I downloaded all of the data I wanted to use from Opus, and then I converted them all into the format I use for Argos Train, which is the zip archive with the Argos data extension and uh, metadata. And then I'm currently uploading it to my data server where they can just stay and then, oh, whoops. Um, and then can um, uh, then I can access them from there. Um, but then I also need to add them to uh, to this file so that Argos Train knows that they exist and can access them programmatically. But fortunately, as you can see here, the metadata for the data index is almost identical to the metadata in the um, almost identical to the metadata in the packages themselves. The only difference is this links attribute, which has uh, a link to actually download the data. So I can just essentially get the metadata by doing um, okay. This one finished. I could kind of do this all at once. But I'll just remember this is the straggler. These all inserted now. But they don't actually have URLs because they're still uploading. Um, 
Mm-hmm. So I guess I can do a preview of actually training the model now, which, so once the data is in data index.json, uh, Argos train will be able to find it. And it can actually, Argos train can use it in both directions. So remember from earlier, the data is essentially two parallel files with uh, parallel sentences in the source and target. So I just uploaded a bunch of data where English is the source and Chinese is the target, but Argos train is smart enough that it can use that data in both directions. So if I want to train a Chinese to English model and Argos train sees that there's English to Chinese data, it can just reverse it and use that as Chinese to English data. Um, and then actually training the Argos translate model, I it's pretty well automated once the data is available. So uh, I'll show this in a minute, but you have to rent a server with a GPU, which I'm going to do from Bass AI. And then everything's set up by this Docker container that essentially pulls this repo, compiles it, and gets everything set up. And then you can run this Argos train script to actually run the whole training process. And you just have to give it some basic information and then it'll find the data and save the model for you. Um, and if you totally don't want to use Argos train, like I say here, you can just use it OpenNMT directly. They have pretty good command line tools. This is how um, I trained all the early Argos Translate models. Um, and then Argos train is really just me automating what I did to manually train OpenNMT models, but um, you can totally just do this yourself. Okay. Uh, so it looks like we're still waiting on a couple of things. Um, Okay, um, so these all finished uh, processing and I uploaded all of these to the data server. Um, and then I committed the updated metadata to um, the Argos train repo. So you can see these URLs here. These are the packages we built earlier and you can download them live. So, Um, and then this is all in the uh, uh, metadata in Argos train. So now Argos train will be able to find this all automatically, programmatically, and um, the actual training should be straightforward. And I only have to do this once. So now that Argos train knows about all this Chinese data, I don't have to go through and add it all again. Um, so I'm renting a 3090. I only need one 3090 from vast.ai. And so when I provision this, I use the Argos Open Tech slash Argos train image. And this is both hosted on Docker Hub and you can build it yourself from the repo. And this essentially just pre-clones the code into, um, into um, pre-clones the code and just does some basic preparation to be able to run the Argos train script. And now we can actually run it. So you have to become the Argos Open Tech user and then run this script to actually initialize things. So this Argos train init script does most of the actual setup. Um, so we can look at, get it here. So the main things are it sets up the Python environment. Um, it sets up the Debian packages we need. It installs OpenNMTPY, um, compiles sentence piece, 
and then we're ready to run uh, okay uh, and then we're ready to run the main training script which will actually download all the data we just packaged and then train the model um, so just by entering these codes here so this will be en to zh It'll go to find the data packages from the metadata and should automate uh, collecting it all to train with. You can see it's um, it's installing OpenNMTPY right now. Um, I think the thing part of this that takes the longest is it has to build sentence piece, uh, which takes a minute. So we're waiting. I can show um, the actual training script. So it's just going to collect some information from you and then run Argos train train function. Um, so this is building sentence piece right here. And So yeah, um, oops. 
So bin Argos train. This runs the uh, command line interface and then passes all the configuration to the train function, which is um, right here. So this will make the run directory, which is home Argos train slash run. Um, this is something you can fit configure. It'll remove the very largest data sets, um, which makes things run a lot smoother. And often the largest ones are the lowest quality. Um, most of this is mostly getting rid of CC matrix, which was causing us problems earlier. That was um, the zero with data set that took a long time. Um, and um, if you set this flag, that uh, that was to manually load the data, so it won't pull it automatically, but we are going to pull it automatically, so it's going to do this. Um, it has an interface to read the metadata and get all the available data sets, and then we're able to find one matching what we're trying to do. And this is what I was talking about earlier, where it can reverse the data sets if need be, so if I run the train the data we just packaged is English to Chinese, but if we want to do Chinese to English, it can just flip them. Um, this is to remove the large data sets, like I was just showing. And then it will actually automatically download them and save them locally. It'll create the Argos model readme automatically, build the metadata. Um, this is to run the sentence piece tokenizer. Um, and then uh, build the OpenNMT vocabulary. And then this is the main process with OpenNMTPY to actually train the model. Um, we average the, oh, this is a bit of a bug. Um, Oops, I just realized that we averaged the 10,000 and 9,000 checkpoint, but I think we're actually defaulting to um, 50,000 now. So, um, actually fix that now. So the issue here is I averaged two checkpoints, which seems to like improve performance a little bit, um, just to not get the particularities of one specific checkpoint. Um, but I in, in I used to train for 10,000 checkpoints, but I've upped that to 50,000. Where is this? Um, yeah. Um, Um, and then if you look, um, oh, I changed it to 20,000, oops. So this train steps is how long it'll train for. Um, I found larger is generally better, um, but sometimes if you're having issues with overtraining, uh, a bit smaller can actually work better. Um, so I'm actually just going to change it to 50,000. Um, train steps.
Yeah, so 50,000 train steps. Um, so 50,000 train steps will take, um, on 13090, maybe like four or five hours. Um, if you do 10K, you can actually get pretty decent results, um, which then takes only an hour or two. Um, and it can also take an hour just to download the data and run the tokenizer, uh, especially for larger languages like German, Spanish, French. Um, but so now we have Argos Train installed, so I just have to run it. So I normally use screen to be able to run it in the background so I can exit this terminal or exit the SSH connection and come back in a few hours. And then like it shows in this readme, I've already done this and this, and I can just run Argos Train to use the command line interface. Um, so we're going to go English to Chinese. And there you go. So it's downloading the Chinese data that we added earlier. Um, so it's going to have to download all of them, and then it'll extract the archives and build the training data set. Uh, run this NMTP's tokenizer, run the open NMT PY training setup, and then it will convert the model for C Translate 2, which is the inference engine. Um, it'll do the quantization for you, which is reducing from 32 bit floats to 8 bit floats, and then it'll create the Argos model package, which is another zip archive. Um, with all the files you need for translation. So for the screen, I can do control A, D, and screen R to come back. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave this, and then I'll come back uh, later today, and it should be done. OK. So I let this run overnight, and now we can take a look at it. So these are all the training steps. It goes to 50,000. Um, and then this is the Argos model package. So I'm going to copy this. install Argos Translate GUI with PIP. Uh, this will also install, this will install the GUI, but then also as a dependency install Argos Translate.
Uh, oh, so uh, I have uh, some packages from the V2 dev branch installed, so I can delete those. So, I'm uh, going to install this package here that we just downloaded. Um, so something broke with the credits. Normally the references should get passed through here, uh, but that's not a huge deal. Um, okay, so let's take a look at it. Translate this English text to Chinese using the new model, and then um, use Google to get it back to English to try to get a sense of how well it's working. So, let's see what this is. Yeah, that's very readable. Uh, let's see what the current model does. Um, so this seems much worse. Um, Okay, so I think we approved it. That was the goal. This seems like a better Chinese model than what we currently have. Um, okay, so let's post this. I'll look at this in a second. Um, and then 
first one. <coughs> So it just didn't translate this section. That's not great. Um, I should have another example. So I've got two decent sized examples here. Um, so let's see what the reverse looks like on Google. So for this box passage, So it seems like it's at least somewhat translated, though a lot of this doesn't make much sense. Um, so this seems to have just not translated names, which is probably reasonable, but this is just leaving some English in here on the new one. The second passage here is much more readable in the newly trained model. Um, I think the first, I think this translation is better than this translation, but I think this translation may be better than this translation because this actually makes sense. The text was written by Leipzig mathematics and theology student Christoph Berkman, who collaborated with Bach. He first described 
He first described Christian believer who was willing to cross the crossroads, comparing life to a voyage to a port. The psalmist alluded to the interpretation of the gospel, which states that Jesus was in a boat. This person ultimately sees death as the final destination to be united with Jesus. The close campus, Kamo Tad du Schlafes Bruder, Kamo Death, Your Brother Sleeps, was staged by Joanne Frank in 1653, duo Charnes Welt Bade, which used images of voyages at sea. Um, so that seems possible. I'm so hope, hoping uh, someone who speaks Chinese can respond to this thread and maybe give a little more insight, because I'm having to um, double translate these. So however bad this text is, it's gone through one more translation than whatever is here. Um, so let's look at the second one. So this is kind of wrong. It's actually like badly wrong. Um, invasion and resignation are very different. Um, so this seems very reasonable, the current one. Um, part of doing this, I realized the current one's actually better than I thought it was. Um, so, even if I don't change to this new one, I feel a lot better having gone through this exercise. Um, I honestly, I haven't been able to improve the models all that much since when I first started Argos Translate. Um, so I, I like know a lot more now, but it, I'm using the same data. I'm still using OpenNMT PY. So not a there haven't been any like leaps and bounds improvements. I just got a lot, a lot better at um, at automating the process, so I can just. I mean, now that I've uploaded the Chinese data, like in this video, I can just uh, run the script, run it overnight, and then have a new model trained um, with whatever modifications I might want to do. But the actual quality is not seeming to be meaningfully better than. Um, It seems to be meaningfully better than what I already have. So let's look at this one. So this sentence is much better translated in the new model. Uh, yeah, this translation is very good. What's the original? I think both of them kind of messed up this receive negatively and just, and they have like the causation in the wrong direction. Um, yeah, no, I think this is good. Okay, so I'll leave it there. To recap, um, we did an extended tutorial of running Argos train and we um, made a bunch of Chinese data packages. We uploaded them to the data.argosopentech.com server, and then um, and then we ran the Argos transcript, trained the Chinese model, used SCP to copy it to our local machine, ran the Argos translate GUI to test it, and then decided we're not going to change it now, but made a post about it so that people can. Um, Weigh in. All right, thanks for watching.